guys welcome back to another Sunday meal prep video super excited that y'all are joining me today as usual uh, we have mm, two new recipes I guess that I'm gonna try and then one repeat recipe uh, I am going to make Charlie's favorite taco soup I mentioned to him the other day that I wanted like easy stuff to make today because last weekend's meal prep seemed to take a long time and I said you know I need something that's a little bit easier so he immediately was like taco soup and I was like okay I'll make taco soup I know y'all have seen it a hundred times but y'all are probably gonna see it a hundred more times so along with that taco soup we are gonna make corn muffins of course as usual and then for our new meals one is they're both from the same website I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head I did not print the recipes I'm just gonna bring my laptop in here and pull it up whenever I get ready to um, make them but one is a chicken teriyaki casserole so it takes um like three cups of cooked rice i have to bake some chicken in the oven shred it up and then we mix it all together with some stir fry veggies and uh, cook it in a casserole dish so that seems pretty easy and kind of interesting at the same time you know kind of a little asian meal there i don't know i doubt that we'll have like the pot stickers and stuff with it i am going to use um jasmine rice it calls for brown rice but um I like jasmine rice so that's what we are going to go with uh, I need to actually remember to get my rice cooker out and cook my rice ahead of time so that it is ready uh, the third thing that we are going to try is or the second new meal or dessert that we're going to do is basically those chocolate no-bake cookies you know the ones with the oatmeal or the oats in it and the chocolate and stuff so it is from the same website that I found the chicken teriyaki I am going to make a couple of changes to her recipe because I think she used real sugar I'm going to use the swerve um, sugar substitute and things like that so just to kind of make it lower in points we will see how that ends up so super excited about today's prep so let's just get right into it alrighty it is that time guys to start our meal prep for the day this is what Charlie has to prep Per usual, my four peppers um, to dice up and then a tomato for my sandwiches. I will just wash my grapes and the vinegar and water. We have a cantaloupe as normal, two pineapples. On the chicken, uh, I am going to go ahead and put the taco soup in and use some of the chicken breasts out of the freezer because they are already trimmed up and ready to go. Um, so Charlie's going to basically trim all of these up. I need two of them for the teriyaki chicken casserole that I'm going to make. He'll just trim up two of them for me to use in the teriyaki chicken casserole and then the other three he will just trim up and put back in the freezer. Sometimes I do like to use the ones from the freezer if I need to put something on like prior to me getting in the shower. So lots of times for crock pot meals and stuff that's what I do. So anyway we are going to um, roll into Charlie's prep now. Mama used to tell me love ain't right if it ain't 
Alrighty guys, I am ready to start on the taco soup. First of all, I have my three chicken breasts in here ready. These are the ones I just pulled out of the freezer. The way I defrost these is just to kind of put them in some hot water. Um, so they've just kind of, you know, naturally defrosted in the hot water and I don't like to put them in the microwave or anything. So those are ready to go. Uh, you will need, well, you will need at least one packet of taco seasoning, whichever one you prefer. I like to use two packets, which does make my taco soup one point for me, but I like to use just the original Taco Bell and then a hot and spicy. Also, I'm going to use three cans of Rotel. I like nor normally I will just use like the big 28 ounce can, but I forgot to add it to my cart. But of course y'all know I have a stash. So I'm going to use two cans of fire roasted, one can of original Rotel, two cans of drained and rinsed black beans. You need a bag of frozen corn, which luckily I think I have exactly enough frozen corn left in this bag because I forgot to add this to my cart yesterday. So I don't have to worry about using the canned whole kernel corn. I still have just a little bit of chicken broth left in here from last week when I made the chicken broth bowls and I think both of my recipes the lasagna soup maybe both used them uh, but I had a little bit left over so I'm probably just going to use all of this which will probably be about four and a half cups of broth but once I shred up the chicken it does absorb a lot of the liquid so it should be fine and then of course for seasonings salt and pepper of course on the chicken and then this is optional I just like to add in a little extra chili powder and ground cumin just to spice mine up a bit but you don't have to most taco soup recipes are not going to call for that it's just going to call for a packet of taco seasoning and then the rest of these ingredients so let's throw this together real quick all right so I have the chicken breast in here all I'm going to do is salt and pepper them first uh, I think most tacos soup recipes call for like diced onion as well and we leave onion out. I always get the question, why don't you use the onion? The answer is we just don't like it. So we just leave it out. So if you want to add onion to yours, then feel free to add onion. Let me get my cans open. I'll be right back. All right, now I'm ready. I got everything open. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my black beans. That's two cans of black beans drained and rinsed. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my corn. Normally like a little 10 ounce or 12 ounce bag is about what I use. This was a big bag, so I've kind of used it over several different things, but that uses that up. I love to use stuff up. And then we're going to go in with our Rotel, so I'm going to use one can of original Rotel, and then I have two cans of fire roasted Rotel. I'm going to use one packet of hot and spicy taco seasoning, one packet of original. It can be any brand. I do specifically like the Taco Bell original taco mix for some reason. I don't know why for some reason, I don't know why. I'm gonna go ahead and add in just a little chili powder and cumin just to spice it up a bit because y'all know how we are. The spicier we eat things then, the more bland other things taste and the spicier we want things, I have realized. But, so a little chili powder and a little cumin, again, that is 100% optional. And then we're gonna go in with our chicken broth. I'm just gonna use what's left in this other one, which is not that much. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the full container of this one. And again, it will seem like a lot of liquid, but once I shred the chicken later, it does need the liquid. And like I said before, this comes out to about one point for me. It would depend for you if your corn and beans is zero points, which I did choose corn and beans to be zero for me. Everything is except for the taco seasoning. And again, if I just use one packet of taco seasoning, this would be a zero point meal. So that's one reason that I love this meal. Charlie just loves the flavor of this meal. This is his favorite meal that I make. I think he would eat taco soup every week if I would allow it. Highly recommend this. Charlie loves it. Super low in points. And then of course I do love to make our corn muffins to go along with it because I feel like I have the points that I can spare for the bread because I'm a bread girl. Don't know about y'all, but I love it. But anyway, that is it. We are going to put this on high. And it's probably going to have to cook for, I don't know, a good six hours or so. I just always set it on eight hours just in case I don't make it back to it. But that's it. And we will um, check on it here in a little bit. All right, so I'm getting ready to make my fruit bows. As usual, I have my pineapple, cantaloupe, and blueberries ready. Uh, I will just make one up just to show you. Uh, I am only making six bowls today because I do have one left over from last week because Saturday I ended up having Moe's for lunch. I did not eat my fruit bowl on Saturday. So uh, we are just gonna make up six. That way 
this should finish up next Sunday. Plus it doesn't look like I have that much cantaloupe, so it's probably a good thing. But I'm just going to throw these together just like this and I will show them to you once I'm finished. Okay guys, so I have my six containers of fruit ready, my six containers of yogurt ready that I dipped the fruit in. That is just a Chobani non-fat Greek yogurt. These are the diced peppers that Charlie diced up for me. Looking delicious. I like to put them in this bowl with the pepper towel just to soak up any moisture. It helps keep them fresh all week. And then of course I have my tomato that he sliced up for my sandwiches. So I'm going to put this away and we will get started on the chicken teriyaki casserole. Alrighty, we are getting ready to start on this chicken teriyaki and rice casserole. This is from emilybites.com. I had completely forgotten which website it was from. I did not print this. I just have it pulled up on my laptop. But we need three-fourths of a cup of low-sodium soy sauce. So I'm just going to use this public soy sauce, half a cup of water. She calls for a third of a cup of packed brown sugar. I'm going to use the Swerve brown sugar replacement. Uh, one tablespoon of honey. I do have honey. I am going to use that. One teaspoon of olive oil. Oh, here's my olive oil. So I'm going to use the actual teaspoon of olive oil because I don't think that'll make that much of a difference in the points. And then we need three-fourths of a teaspoon of ground ginger going to use that. Half a teaspoon of minced garlic. I forgot to get my garlic out. I always do. Uh, two tablespoons of cornstarch. We're going to have to make a slurry with um, two tablespoons of water. And then one and a half pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast, which earlier I thought that that said one and a half chicken breast. So Charlie got me two ready, but I got one more out of the freezer because the two was not enough. I didn't feel like. So we are just going to use three chicken breasts there. 32 ounces of frozen mixed vegetables, which I still have those in the freezer. I'm just going to use those Kroger or stir fry vegetables that I usually use. And then one cup of drained canned pineapple tidbits in pineapple juice. So I have this here, so we will use that. And then three cups of cooked brown rice is what it calls for. I have my rice cooker going. I put one and a half cups of jasmine rice in here. Rice is not zero for me. I prefer jasmine rice, but um, definitely use brown rice if that's what you want to use. But if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. So we have our rice going. We are going to basically mix up this sauce, I guess, on the stovetop and put it over the chicken in a casserole dish. And then it is going to bake for like 30, 45 minutes. Then we will shred the chicken add in the veggies, add in the rice and everything else, and then bake it um, again. So I'm going to get my saucepan ready, get my minced garlic, and we're going to make this real quick. I have my oven preheating to 350, and I'm going to get my laptop off my stove. Ha <laughs> ha. That's the only bad thing about me not printing it, but I want to go upstairs. I know that sounds lazy, but it is what it is. All right, we are ready to get started on the sauce over here. I do have the three chicken breasts over here in the casserole dish ready to go. I just put salt and pepper on them. It doesn't say to, but you know, I believe in salt and peppering everything. So to make the sauce, we're going to go in with three fourths of a cup of the soy sauce, which I have measured out here. And then we need half a cup of water and put that in as well. Then we're going to go in with our teaspoon of garlic and our half a teaspoon of ground ginger. I just put that in this bowl together, trying to get everything measured out. We need a tablespoon of honey. So I have that measured out here. I'm going to put that in. It might take a minute to get in, but then we also need, it says a packed third of a cup of brown sugar. So I have the swirl brown sugar here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And then we need a teaspoon of olive oil. So I'm just going to stir this and we need to bring this to a boil. And while this is warming up, we are going to make our slurry and have it ready to put in. And I'm going to put the lid on so that it will try to come to a boil a little bit quicker. Okay, so we have definitely brought this to a boil. I just took the lid off. It's boiling pretty well. It says to let it boil for about a minute. We're going to make the slurry while we are waiting. So I just have two tablespoons of cornstarch in there. We're going to add two tablespoons of water. And then basically we're going to mix this up. This is just supposed to help thicken the sauce. And then we're going to put about a cup of the sauce on top of the chicken and get it baking in the oven. Okay, so I think we're ready to go ahead and put in our slurry. And it says just to cook this for about a minute until you can feel the sauce thickening up, which I immediately feel it thickening up. So turn the heat down a little, it's going to start splashing everywhere. Okay, so I think the sauce is good. We're going to pour, it says about a cup of it over the chicken. And then we're going to save the rest to put in the casserole. 
So I'm just going to kind of guess here. Okay, so now we're going to bake the chicken in the oven. It says 30 to 35 minutes until it is done. You know, I might bake it a little bit longer because, you know, I want it extra well done. And then we will be back and shred the chicken, add in the rice, add in the pineapple, put the rest of the sauce in, and then it will bake again. Alrighty, guys. So I have the chicken out of the oven. I have shredded it up just with the two forks. And now we are going to go in with our rice, our vegetables, and our pineapple. So I, I did one and a half cups of dry rice. So I have just a little bit over three cups of cooked rice here. We're going to put all of that in. And I also have the vegetables. I just steamed these in the microwave. Um, it called for 32 ounces. I think this was 36 ounces. I think there were 12 ounce bags. This casserole is going to be thick, y'all. And then we also have, it calls for a cup of drained and rinsed pineapple. I've got a little bit more than a cup here, but we're going to go ahead and use it all. Otherwise, it would just go to waste. Okay, now I'm going to try to carefully mix all of this together. And then we're going to top it with the sauce. Okay, so I had to transfer it to a bowl because I could not stir it in that dish. <laughs> Charlie had to hold it for me so I could get it out because I was just making a big mess. So, my advice would be to transfer it to a huge bowl, which this is actually the bowl that I just steamed the vegetables in in the microwave. So I didn't have to mess up another dish. And then it says to go ahead and add in most of the sauce and save a little bit to drizzle on top. And I'm going to go ahead and mix that in while it's in the bowl as well so that it can get dispersed evenly. Then it's going back into the casserole dish and then into the oven for another 15 minutes. Okay, so we we're going to go back into the casserole dish. All right, y'all. I think this one's going to turn out to be good. Look at this. This is what I like. A nice, good, bulky meal. Because I don't like to be hungry. So... Looking good. We're going back in the oven, 15 minutes, and then we will just drizzle some sauce on the top of it. I may drizzle it like when I individually plate it and just put a little drizzle on top of each one. There's not very much left. We'll see. But uh, we're going to bake it for an additional 15 minutes now. All right, so I have the casserole out of the oven. It is ready to be plated up. Um, I'm probably just going to try to divide it as equally as I can. These are going to be pretty big portions. And I'm going to drizzle the extra sauce kind of on top of each bowl after I get them plated up. So that's about what one's going to look like. Let me get them all plated up and then I'll show them to you. Okay, so I have all of them portioned out pretty evenly. I'm just going to try to take and drizzle a little bit of sauce on top of each one. There's not a whole lot of sauce left but it'll give them a little bit of the taste. All right, here are the completed chicken teriyaki casserole bowls. Uh, they are looking delicious. I think that this is gonna be a really good meal prep. It's nice and hearty. It should be very filling. We will not have to add anything to eat with this. I doubt that I will be able to even finish a whole bowl, but super excited to try it this week. I have tried a bite and it is delicious. So now we're going to go ahead and make up the corn muffins and get those in the oven and then work on our cookies. All right, we are ready to start on the corn muffins. I know you've seen me make these a million times. I have one and a half cups of the Martha White Hot Rise uh, Self-Rising Corn Meal in there. And we are going to use one and a half cans of cream style corn, which I am going to weigh it to where I have 21 ounces, which is about a can and a half. So it gives me 13.6 ounces there, Ooh, 21 exactly, so perfect. And then we need three tablespoons of egg whites. This is a half tablespoon, so I'm going to do six of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then I'm just going to mix it up well, and it'll be ready to skip into the 12 muffins. Okay, so it is ready to skip into the 12 muffins. I've just sprayed my uh, muffin tin with the baker's spray. And we are just going to use an ice cream scoop and try to divide them as evenly as we can. Okay, they're ready to go in the oven. They're going to go in 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. 
All right, here are the corn muffins, fresh out of the oven, smelling and looking delicious. I'm gonna let those cool, and then I will uh, put those in a container to store those in the refrigerator. All righty, I'm ready to start on these no-bake oatmeal peanut butter cookies, chocolate cookies. So we have three cups of oats here. We have half a cup of 1% milk, half a cup of light butter, it calls for one cup of regular sugar. I'm using this Swerve Sugar Replacement, so I have one cup of that. Half a cup of peanut butter. That's just regular Jif peanut butter. And then I uh, think a teaspoon of vanilla and then some cocoa powder. So I'm just going to use my Hershey's Special Dark. So basically we're just going to mix everything up and then cut the heat off. And then add in the oats and the peanut butter and everything. And this is supposed to make maybe 32 cookies. Uh, this is from RecipeDiaries.com, but I did change a couple of things on here. Um, so we'll just see how many cookies we end up with and how much the points ends up to be. Her points come out to four points per cookie, which seems kind of high to me, but I'm not using the regular sugar. Uh, she did put half a cup of pecans chopped as optional on there. I'm not using that. Uh, I did use regular peanut butter instead of reduced fat because I didn't have any reduced fat. So going, we were going to mix together the butter, the milk, the sugar, and the cocoa powder in a saucepan over medium heat and bring it to a boil. Then we we're going to remove it, stir in peanut butter, vanilla extract, and salt, and then stir in oats. It says and pecans, but we don't have pecans. And then it'll be ready to just put out on some parchment paper. So these are the no-bake cookies. And I used to love these when I was a kid. Kid, my mom made them all the time. So excited to try them. We'll see how they end up and how many I end up with. I'm just going to use my little cookie scoop and see how many. I just want them to be like a normal size. However many I get, that's how many servings I'll put in whenever I build my recipe. And we'll see how many points they are. Okay, so I am ready to start on the cookies. So we need to put in the butter, the milk, the sugar, and the cocoa powder. It says in a small saucepan. This one's not that small, but I do have to add the oats and everything. I'm just going to mix it all in here, so we're just going to go with it. And I just have it on a medium heat right now so I can get everything in there. So there is the half a cup of butter. We're going to go in with half a cup of milk, one cup of sugar, and this is the Swerve Sugar Replacement. And then we're going to do four tablespoons of the cocoa powder. So there's one, two, three, four. So we're going to mix this and bring it to a boil. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat up now that I have it all in here. And then once it comes to a boil, we are going to boil it for one minute. And then we're going to remove it from the heat and put in the peanut butter, the vanilla extract, and the salt. So I will be back once this is boiling. Okay, so we are boiling and it says to let it boil for about a minute, which it's almost been about a minute. Then we're gonna remove it from the heat. We're gonna add in the salt, half a, I mean a fourth a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla, and the half a cup of peanut butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the heat off and we're literally just gonna move it right here. Okay, so I have my salt measured out. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the salt. And this is a half teaspoon, so we're gonna do two of these for the vanilla. So there's one, two, and let's see if we can get the peanut butter in there. Okay, now we are just gonna mix this well, and then once this is combined, we will add in the oats. Again, the recipe says optional pecans, but I'm not gonna add those in. I just never had pecans in these cookies growing up, so that seems a little odd to me, I guess, but it might be good. Okay, so I think that looks mixed pretty well. The peanut butter did mix right in there. So we're gonna go ahead and go in with our three cups of oats. And I'm just going to get that mixed well, and then they will be ready to scoop out. It does not look to me like I'm going to get 32 cookies, because I don't want 32 nickel-sized cookies, if you know what I'm saying. We'll see how many I end up with. Okay, so I'm going to move over to my little parchment paper, and we will get these scooped out. All right, so here is our mixture. I think it's looking pretty good. I'm going to give it another stir. Okay, so I'm just going to use this small cookie scoop and... We'll see how many we get. cookies portioned out here I ended up with 21 not 32 so <laughs> I knew that I wouldn't get 32 unless I made them really tiny 
but we're gonna let those cool and set up and we will be done for the day all right all right all right we are finally done with meal prep for the day super excited to be done uh over here i have my six containers of fruit and yogurt that i made up this is the chicken teriyaki casserole uh, i think it's going to be really delicious excited to try this so over here we have our taco soup, which of course we love. And then each night we each get two corn muffins to go along with it. And over here I have my eggs for the week. I also have my bacon. I forgot to get it back out. Uh, and I have two strips of bacon ready for each day along with my five containers of eggs. And then my chocolate cookies. I forgot to get my bacon back out, I guess, because the cookies are kind of sitting in its place. But anywho, it is done. It is ready to go. And overall, I have completed another successful meal prep. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me for another Sunday meal prep. I know this is going to be a good week. Everything looks, smells, and tastes delicious from everything that I have tried. Y'all know taco soup is our favorite, especially Charlie's favorite. Uh, this one, from what I tasted whenever I was plating it up, it tasted delicious. Cookies taste good. Everything I think is going to be great this week. So, again, a setup for success this week. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat every day. I already know. And yeah, thank you again so much for joining me. If you haven't yet already subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button for me down below and give me a like. It really helps support my channel. And of course, I love all of my Jennifer's gems that make it all the way to the end of each video. I love you guys. I will see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.